Hi, it's Dwyer. It is March the 6th, 2021. DigitalAssetLife.com, a free site. Uh, always, 1776.com, a free site. Let's talk crypto, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now I've made videos here where I've pointed out that Ethereum doesn't have a maximum supply. That for me, the first rule of a cryptocurrency being able to retain value is that it have scarcity. And of course, I've pointed out that Cardano, for example, an Ethereum competitor has a maximum supply. Of course, it goes without saying that Bitcoin has a maximum supply, as does Chainlink, for those keeping track. While many of you in the comment section of the videos have pointed out that Ethereum is making changes, they do have a protocol that's going to go in effect in July called EIP-1559. Again, that's EIP-1559, whereby Ethereum's going to reduce the volatility of its transaction fees, which can get quite high at times, by burning the fees paid to miners above a base fee. In other words, in the world of decentralization, we're going to have, in the Ethereum world, centrally set prices for miners. Apparently, during times of very high volume, the protocol will allow Ethereum to increase the base fee slightly. But there's going to be a cap on the base fee. The idea is to guarantee users of Ethereum cheaper transaction fees, less volatility. Now, as you can imagine, the miners are very upset. They stand to lose a lot of money. Right now, it's a free market. It's an auction in terms of how Ethereum transactions are processed. Here, you're going to put a price ceiling on that mining activity. So there's a lot of blowback. Supporters, of course, are saying, whoa, by burning some Ethereum here, we're reducing the supply. I believe as of today, and again, it's early March 2021, it is unclear whether this is going to create the kind of hard cap on Ethereum that you right now have for, let's say, Binance's BNB coin, right, which is in the top 10 in market cap for all crypto, right? It's unclear to me whether this new protocol that's going to be put in place is going to create a hard maximum supply number like you have with Bitcoin and its 21 million Bitcoin ever to be mined ceiling, right? But, and understand, I am a speculator in Ethereum, right? I'm not anti-Ethereum, I'm a speculator. I would just prefer a hard cap, establish scarcity, right? Let me also say too, I like to see something work before I put a lot of stock in it. So this isn't as good, and Ethereum's up today, this isn't as good to me as seeing it in operation, seeing it work for users, seeing it work for miners. Let's understand these cryptocurrencies are ecosystems, right? There's uncertainty here. But let me make a more foundational point, and I believe it's very important. Even if this works, let's say the EIP-1559 passes, is implemented, goes through, works as intended, 
Let's say customers are thrilled, right? Their transactions might even be faster as well as cheaper, right? Okay, great. Let's say it works. And let's say that this caps the supply of Ethereum might even make Ethereum deflationary. Well, understand, even with all of that, and I know I'm going to disagree with some of you, Ethereum is not as good an investment as Bitcoin is. You know, just understand, it can't be because it has serious competition. Right? There is Cardano. There is Polkadot. Hell, there's even Cosmos. Let's talk about how serious the competition is in the world of smart contract processing, etc. An investment outfit, a billion dollar investment outfit called FD7 Ventures decided that they were going to sell some Bitcoin and they were going to buy two, right, two other cryptocurrencies. So they're spending hundreds of millions of dollars to do so, right, selling Bitcoin and buying 380 million dollars of Cardano. Think about it. In all, they're converting 750 million dollars to buy Cardano and Polkadot, two Ethereum competitors. I know Polkadot can work in tandem with Ethereum. I understand that. But you don't have this level of competition for Bitcoin as a store of value. You just don't, folks. Not only that, as I've mentioned before, we're talking about Ethereum 2.0, right? Ethereum's trying to update itself in part because of volatility of transaction fees, low throughput, other problems. They're going to be forced from time to time to meet the innovations that are incorporated into their competition. When you're looking for a store of value, you want the opposite. You want to set it and forget it. Right? Think gold investing. You want to buy some gold? That's your reserve. You just want to buy it, put it in a safe someplace, and leave it there. Bitcoin, crypto's equivalent of gold, doesn't have the competition that Ethereum has in the space. They just don't. Let me add, too, that Bitcoin people buy Bitcoin to have as a store of value. I know there are things in the pipeline like Lightning Network and stuff like that. But let's face it. You don't use Bitcoin as a means of exchange. For that, you have other coins. Dash, for example. Right? Pivx is a great means of exchange coin. The kind of coin that can act quickly. Bitcoin isn't there. Users don't care. Michael Saylor is talking about MicroStrategy holding Bitcoin for a hundred years. You get Bitcoin not to process transactions, but just to sit there as a store of value. And you know already the ceiling is 21 million coins. You also know because of the revolutionary nature of the technology that many of the coins have been lost. Because early on, people were dealing in thousands of coins, doing things like buying pizzas and stuff like that, right? And didn't value it the way we do now. You're never going to have that, ever. 
with Ethereum. Let me point out too that as Cardano continues to get huge investments from investment groups like $380 million, right? Think about that. A group sold Bitcoin to buy Cardano, right? The CEO, excuse me, the managing partner, Parash Chan, for FD7, look it up, FD7 Ventures, talked about how he thought that Cardano and Polkadot, competitors of Ethereum, could rise approximately 20x in the next two to three years. Bitcoin has no competitor on par with Cardano and Polkadot. Bitcoin has really an unrivaled network Right? It has the highest market cap in all of crypto. For some other cryptocurrency to come along as a store of value, they're going to take years. Years. And Bitcoin's been around more than a decade. They're going to take years to match Bitcoin's hash rate. And if you don't match the hash rate, then you don't have the security of Bitcoin. So, I'm not selling my Ethereum. I like the idea of Ethereum trying to limit its supply. But let's just say EIP-1559, which has miners upset right now, is a bit hazy on exactly what the maximum supply of Ethereum is going to be. We don't know the fallout of this because it really it goes against the ethos of the free market nature of cryptocurrency. Look, I'm an unabashed capitalist. I make no bones about it. Even though it's inconvenient and at times it's mind-blowingly inconvenient, I like the idea of the market setting the transaction fees for coins. Right? I don't want too much centralization. Excuse me. Outside of BNB coin, Binance's BNB coin, which operates on the Binance smart chain, with the exception of that coin, I don't want too much centralization. I don't want too much top-down price fixing as is suggested by this Ethereum EIP-1559 protocol. So it's early March. Let's see what happens between now and July. I imagine within the Ethereum community there's going to be a lot of discussion on whether having the network set a base fee is the right way to go. But more importantly, between now and July, I'm also curious to see the appreciation, if any, in price for Ethereum's competitors like Cardano, like Polkadot, Let's just say the Ethereum space is much more unsettled and much more competitive than the Bitcoin space, where Bitcoin holders, in effect, have said it and forget it, have said it and forgotten it, right? You know, realistically, there are a lot of Bitcoin holders out there who, while they'd like Lightning Network to work, really aren't that concerned by it. Right? Because they've bought the Bitcoin to hold for the next 100 years. Like MicroStrategy. Right? That's a different type of investment than an investment in Ethereum. 
That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I know many of you disagree with me. That's fine. Leave those comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. And if you're hearing this on Google's podcast store or on Apple Podcasts, my YouTube site is youtube.com slash D-W-Y-E-R 70905. Thanks for stopping by.